I like the oh, I'm sorry. Financial affairs, oh, and water. Oh, right. Thank you. Right. Um, we're going to start with roll call. Starting with Mr. Burnell Williams. Charles Burnell Williams, present. Zachary Epps, present. Mia Blitzstein, present. Dan Schultz, present. Robin Murphy, present. Pamela Henry present, and for the record, Mr. Ross Whiting is present. He just stepped out of the room for a moment. And um, motion to approve our minutes, minutes from last session. So moved. Second. On the right blank, yellow name. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 All right, motion carries. I will turn it over to Mr. Spiker. All right, tonight um, we will discuss the interim financial statements. Um, the, the most recent interim financial statements we have are it's 31st, today uh, being October 1st. Uh, I wasn't able to turn around the September 30th interim. Um, after that, we'll discuss our pre audit year and financial results. Take a look at how last year went uh, from a financial perspective to the general fund. We will take a look at the actual index as the uh, yesterday was supposed to be the state approval and certification of the Act One index, which I'm still waiting to receive. Sorry, spoiler alert. Um, we'll take a look at, the, at the, the timeline for the high school stadium, and we'll take a look at one board action item for next week. All right, so the August 31st, as you know, the August 31st interim financial statements aren't incredibly helpful just because of um, we're right in the midst of tax collection season. And there's a lot of variation in the timing of cash flows, um, as evidenced in, in our you know, $9 million increase in cash year over year. Um, that's certainly all driven by just a quicker collection. I don't know if it's indicative of any, anything at this point. Um, so with that, we'll flip over to the um, the income statement side, the, the statement of net assets. Um, with this, I also won't spend a lot of time on it, but we're, we're looking at $78 million in revenues, receipts to the end of August 31st versus last year, 69 million. A lot of that is, is real estate tax driven. And uh, one thing to point out is last year, we closed out and spent a lot of that ESSER money, which expired on September 30th as of yesterday. So. A lot of that revenue being paid out to us now. If we scroll back one slide, you can see we have a really large federal revenue receivable balance at the end of the year, and we're starting to collect on it. So some of this money will end up full receivables as we, we uh, move away from cash basis of account. Uh, on the expenditure side, it looks like we're we're out of control with regular programming, but in reality, um, just some connection with the educational affairs meeting. That is the payment for Nuzella and the recent ERL, ELA curriculum that was, that was purchased. Um, that makes all, all, almost the entirety of that $800,000. Um, those expenditures are actually spread over six years. And like I said, we're cash basis at this point. So we just record the expense and we need to make an entry to spread that out. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out was the reduction in summer and alternative school. Uh, ESSER ran out alternative summer uh, programming was reduced. The programming that was the least effective was actually eliminated. So it didn't necessarily impact the, the goals we were trying to achieve over the summer. Some of that excess spending was, was cut back. There is a reduction in administrative services of $105,000. That is because last year we spent some money through the strategic plan developing the, uh, the district website. And those expenditures occurred early in the year before the, before the school year started. And obviously, we don't have the same expenditures this year. That was a one year cost. So that resulted in a reduction of $100,000 administrative services. And looking down at operations and maintenance, we had some additional costs incurred over the summer getting Epic up and running. Um, the mods look fantastic. The mods required some work, particularly on the HVAC side, to get them um, back and fully functional. Any questions on the statements through August? Uh, the structural balance graph looks pretty pathetic at this point. <laughs> so I'll move on from that. Just keep it in there. 
<laughs> you can place soda in there. <laughs> um, historical tax collection is still very early in the year. And you'll, you'll notice real estate transfer taxes are continuing their, their I don't say reduction, but they they stabilized from our 2022-2023 you know, exceptional levels of um, transfer taxes due to a lot of real estate movement. Mm -hmm. On the delinquent tax side, we're still experiencing some of the slowdown of those revenue collections. And the one item to point out, earnings on investments, they are year over year, um, they're more. We have, a, we have a larger cash balance. But beginning in August, we started to see our first uh, rate reductions, actually in anticipation, market anticipation of Fed Reserve rate dropping uh, half, a, half a percentage point. So that will certainly have an import, impact going forward <clears throat> as the three point. Seven five million dollars we collected interest income last year was such a big number. We'll have to pay attention, carefully pay attention to how that unfolds going forward. All right, any question on the uh, interim tax collections, local tax collections? All right, so I thought it would be helpful to present last year's uh, pre audit rough draft financial results through June thirtieth. June 30th, 2024, and provide some historical information if there are any questions or any discussion. Um, some, some points I wanted to highlight, looking at local revenues, interest income, real estate taxes were the biggest driver in the increase in local revenues from $104 million to $106 million year to year. The million dollar increase, roughly million dollar increase in state sources was driven by the basic education subsidy. Um, and the federal revenue increase of approximately 1.2 million. We had a slight increase in our title one allocation, which is for early, early learning, reading and math interventions. And we had, um, we had some medical access money we spent as reimbursement from paraprofessional wages spent on medical necessity. And we had, of course, ESSER money that was spent a lot of, a large amount of it was spent last year. So just for reference, we got that increase in Title I money. We hired an additional reading specialist who's splitting time between Myers and, and Lincoln. Um, on the expenditure side, uh, one item I think is really worth noting is special education. There was a $2.4 million increase in special education year over year. Approximately a million dollars of that salaries and benefits were additional, additional paraprofessionals required based on the mix of students in the schools, um, mix of special ed students, the needs of special ed students in the schools. Um, we also saw additional spending because we, we took in $300,000 of access money. We spent that money, that's another $300,000, that two and a half million, and we had $600,000 of tuitions because uh, some of the, the um, special ed students that came into the district where we were unable to educate them and place them at outside agencies. So that, that 2.4 million, the, the size of that increase was much more than anticipated. All right, next item is instructional staff. Us for instructional staff grew seven hundred thousand dollars. We had uh, literary co literacy coaches that were assisting our buildings that were brought in um, through ESSER money, and that ESSER money expired, and that makes up almost the entirety of that increase, which will not be a recurring cost. Uh, on the operation side, we went from ten and a half to ten point nine million. If you recall, we had some large ticket purchases. We bought two trucks. Um, we made some repairs to some of the buildings, and that was uh, the trucks were kind of one-off purchase. We don't buy trucks every year. And the other large driver, we had this two and a half million dollar increase in special ed, and we had a two point one million dollar increase in transportation. We talked about this ad nauseum: ten percent increase in our contract to shuttle the trans, and uh, one point eight million dollars to the IU for. Um, for transportation, for special education, which was really a brief prior year losses they they incurred, and was just a function of uh, the state making up their their losses. 
Um, so bottom line, at the end of the year, we're looking at roughly a change of fund balance of 5.9 million. Of that, we'll look at moving some money into our capital reserve fund to fund our future capital spending uh, to avoid the necessity to increase um, to increase taxes due to, to debt service and to address any uh, unforeseen expenditures that may occur. Yes. Quick question. Just, you mentioned um, literacy coaches with ESSER. I think you said that's not a non-recurring cost. Is that what you said? So for several years, we had additional supports with literacy, literacy coaches to make up um, the handles of compensatory education lost through COVID. They were hired through the University of Penn. Oh, so it, because of, it's not recurring because it's ending. Uh, Correct. Program. The program. It's actually ending. Okay. Yeah. Right. But in terms of, uh, I know we've been doing, well, I guess this is a, that's a no cost for Thank you. It's not it's not ending, it's just being reduced. It's reduced. Okay, okay. So it's not as if those literacy coaches are because this year, that was last last year. So like this year there's we still have literacy coaches. The, the level of services through I guess our district, or is it still through the through you pen? It's it's still through you pen. Okay. So it's still going just we're paying for it. Correct. Yeah. So then I guess so then I'm stuck with how is it non referring? Well, the, the size of the expenditure was over half a million dollars okay. in prior years. And now, now it's one hundred twenty-five thousand. So, God, I got a size of it. Okay, and it's I guess it's more of a matter of accounting thing because we're still being paid for. It's just correct. Yeah. Hey, Josh, one quick question: With real estate taxes, in terms of the increase in um, in collections, is that just like a part of timing, or are we actually collecting more? Like what's the reason behind it? it it's almost purely timing. Okay. Um, we get we get several large chunks of payments that come through mortgage processing companies. Gotcha. Um, if one day you know it crosses the month. Right. Do they yeah. have coffee on Tuesday or do they have coffee? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. Um I just wanted to underscore on the not the historical tax collection slide, but the audit. Numbers. Um, oops. The unaudited numbers. The unaudited numbers. Thank you. Um, for anyone watching, six million dollars of surplus is a large number. However, you said three point seven of that, correct, was um, interest income. That's gross. which is a blessing, but not. You can't look at that and consider that long-term sustainable recurring revenue because we. Can't and so I would um, I would refer back to this yes is where correct. interest income was in August just a few years ago. I just wanted to highlight that just you know as we're going forward and, and at our board as well we're thinking about budgets in future years and I'm sure over the next several weeks and months we'll be thinking a lot about this. Um, it's great we're in a great feeling position right now but to some extent we can't um, take it for granted or take it as long term. As we're thinking about our choices. Thanks. Any other questions? Four. All right. So, um, looking at this year's Act One index, as predicted, the base index is four percent. Um, as I mentioned, we don't have from the state our um, our potential adjusted index yet. The, the adjusted in index usually comes to play when you have a market value personal income a ratio of over 0.4, which we're at. So it could be 4.5. That would probably that would probably be the number that was adjusted somewhere along that range, and I would put that in this column. But I don't know what it is yet. So. Yeah, this is a, sorry. Are we are ready for questions on just this? Or that is such a small slide. Sure. I asked one other comment. So the, the market value personal yeah. income aid ratio is a measure of um, assessed value for a student in the district, and it's a combination of assessed value for student and personal income for student average out. So my question is, because we the last time we had this was in 2018-19, and it was just 0 0.003 minuscule amount above. Whereas last year it's a full loan. Two point two point three versus two point six. No, sorry, but if you, we were not 
in 2018-19, so, which triggered moving from 0.3 to 0.6. Yes. We were only, we were four, we were 0. 0.4003. So we were just 0. 0.003 above that 0. 0.4 cutoff. And that translated to a whole third of a percent adjustment. Is it, uh, is there a rhyme or reason to what your adjusted X1 index is going to be? Is it linked to the ratio or is it a human looks at and says? It's linked, it's linked to the ratio. If you're above 0. 0.4, then it's, it becomes an adjusted index, which provides more. And I guess what I mean is, is the adjusted index, um, everyone has the same adjusted index, or is it based on what your ratio was the previous year? The higher your ratio, your adjustment to be that. I don't know the math that goes because. Unders I, and I, I, I'm just, it's just a 0. 0.0003 you know, three, translated to 0. 0.3. Are we looking at a 100% on the start? <laughs> All right, but that, thank you. That, that makes sense. So, um, or doesn't make sense actually, but it makes sense as uh, yeah, yeah. what well, you've it's said. It's a cap, so you know, hopefully we don't have to have to Thank you. So this may be a silly question, but okay, great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Sorry, I'm not, I already, I I already asked it. Sometimes I do need a little bit. Okay, so the Act One index for this school year is five point three percent. Yes. Whereas, well, first of all. We we only went up to one point one percent last year, right? Or was that for one point four six? One point for this year. I'm saying what? How is the Act One index number determined? Like why is it so high? It's two factors, and they're basically wage average wage driven. One's a state state wage driven number, and the other is the federal wage driven. So it reflects wage wage. Got it. Okay. Thank you. And I'll just uh, yeah, to so make it very, very clear what the Act One index is, is it's the limit of what we're allowed to raise taxes to. And it's roughly, a, a, it's I think intended to be a rough estimate of what your status quo increase should look like. In terms, in terms of inflation. Of, in terms of costs of doing business. Actually, in our index context of what that one is. Yeah. That, yeah. So, okay. as you just did. So, it, it's estimating, you know, we just drive. Cost movement primarily. You know, seventy percent of what we do is wage effect. That's very similar across many organizations. So um, the ratio takes into consideration average wage movement at the state level, separate factor at the national level to drive to calculate what that that should be, what that max time. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? So again, I'm, I'm just going to keep this as a reoccurring slide. Um, we're supposed to receive our district Act One allocation on September 30th. Um, I've heard it's coming next week, so um, I will update the world when we re when we receive it, um, and we will begin uh, compiling our, our preliminary budget towards the end of November and begin meeting with our directors and uh, putting together this preliminary budget so that by December we can make a decision about whether we need to raise tax above the Act One index or below. Because uh, January fourth is the deadline for adoption. We don't have a meeting until after that. Right? Um, that's our next target. Is the next point. All right. Uh, wishing this. The target is the next board meeting. Talking about October. December. December. Oh, okay, I got you. That board. <laughs> okay, that board. Yes. <laughs> All right. This looks perfectly clear on my screen, but it's a little blurry. So um, looking at just a quick chart of uh, the projected timeline for the Shelton Hips Scholarship Project. Um, we met with coaches, we met with uh, directors um, way back in the summer of 2023. That input was used for architects and engineers to begin to design um, said project. Now here we are out of the documentation phase and we're very near the bid and award phase. So um, on October 28th, we were scheduled to appear before the, the Shelton Township Planning Commission meeting uh, to present the project and to get feedback about um, what the township needs to see or what they disagree with our engineers and our architects about what's in that project. Hopefully nothing. I'm sure there's always something um, if they're doing due diligence. Um, after we get through that, that planning commission phase, um, we will then begin advertising advertising bid phase 
so that we can we can approve that and um, to set November's for them. Um, after that is done, then we will have a uh, kind of a procurement phase, uh, procuring the items, the contractor procuring items, lining up uh, his subcontractors, and we're looking at a construction phase beginning in March, anticipated ending four, and we have two phases for turf stand fencing, anticipated ending um, at the end of August for the start of football season, and there's still some additional work with the gatehouse and the bathroom facilities that will more than likely extend beyond. August. So there's two phases of construction. There's the field, there's the stands, there's the fencing, which will we'll have a construction period from March to August, which will be, should, should be ready for football season. And then the piece that's the gatehouse, the bathrooms, the concessions is looking more like this when you extend beyond. So the gatehouse, restroom, and the concessions is going to go past August for construction. And that's the projected time. So would nothing be there, or the old, will there be construction during the there, season? There will be construction. We'll have to have alternate arrangements for alternate. All set of the yeah. yeah. Graduation. Yes. Where will that be held? <laughs> As a parent we, of a we, senior. We have, all, we have an alternative. <laughs> okay. Which will. Wondering what I'm thinking this year. I'll be there. Uh, I'll uh, be there. I'll um find a bad idea. Very close to where we're currently. Thank you. Thank you. I told the people say it's been reserved as before. Okay, great. Fabulous. Thank you. Any questions on the high school stadium timeline? Is there a for phase two? Are we going to do it? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, we will come to you. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, two questions now, so you don't forget. <laughs> phase two. No, <laughs> All right, the next item on the list is board action items we have to purchase. This is a this is a regular purchase. It's already in the budget for information technology. It's eighty thousand dollars of network equipment, switches, licenses, which keeps keeps the district connected. Eighty thousand dollars is actually the piece we pay. That's thirty percent of the entire cost. Most of it's funded through an e-rated program. If you're familiar with that, which is a um, grant for uh, connectivity. And is that upfront, or is that another multi-year? Charge. I believe I believe this is a multi year one time eight thousand looks like this All right, and um and that concludes my presentation. Are there any questions on the board action items? Any questions from the board, Dan? Yeah, uh, around the field project. So uh, we recently learned a little bit about turf and turf options that you're gonna be considering. And I'm curious at what point do, do decisions get made around those you know yeah. around those materials. November's board meeting. Yeah. Um, so that is when uh, we will have a price, assuming the price is okay. Uh, we will have a more detailed timeline based on this project. Um, hopefully an expedited timeline on certain parts of it. Um, and that's when the rubber meets the road. No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> With or without rubber. <laughs> Thank you. So, so just for clarification, we can we can bid the project yeah, right. alternates. So we could say we want this option, but if we wanted to, um, you know, if we wanted 100 more seats, what would that cost? Please provide a price for 3,000 seats. Please provide a price for 3,100 seats. Like we could bid mm -hmm. it with alternates. All right, because a lot of it we've already approved. Okay, excuse me. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. In the water. <laughs> sure. Um, the stadium project also includes track resurfacing, correct? That's correct. And none. Uh, Restate your question. Reconstruction. Reconstruction of the track. Correct, because it's a six lane now and it's going to be an eight. I just want you to correct answer the full. Well, and I saw I saw we have 
Collegiate yeah. Marketing Institute. Yeah. yeah, big big time meets in this track. Um, what is this a track for? Ants? Track season is this year. Uh, what's one up in there? Move Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Epps. Thanks. Uh, wanted to go back to the. So sorry, cut off. But uh, the approval by this because part of it we've already approved. And I think once we come back in November, we're not necessarily approving like options. So the scope has been approved. So maybe a better example would have been: Are we building bleachers? Out of aluminum, or we will do any kind of material type. So we're not just we're not changing scope, we're changing yeah. And first was included in that scope, right? So, yeah, we've approved we're going forward with this. We're not going to be deciding on like which options of turf or things like that that we're going to move forward. We're going to we're kind of beginning. So then what are we actually deciding on? Uh, you, you would be, but we are that's yeah. not a part of the bid. Pro okay. Well. We have to make recommendations based on the conversation that we even had this evening mm -hmm. uh, for the consideration of the board right. with the materials um, that we would be using. For instance, they presented a completely different option that none yeah. of us were aware yeah. of yeah. until tonight. Yeah. Well, it is, but Peter. but is it but when you right. when you and yeah, so those are the type of Right. Things that we would have to unpack with you guys, just as a yeah. yeah. So then in November we would be deciding on that final package, who's going to do it, and the actual process for me. Well, well those those were that would be the transferable piece in, in November. In November, yeah, yeah, yeah. we will make a recommendation. We don't know the price until somebody writes down. This is what I can do. Yeah. yeah, and through that process we'll learn. This is the option. This is the material. Right. Kind of thing. Some, yeah. similar to. How options were listed for feasibility study. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That makes sense. I want just just for clarity, so you know, because again, part of it we've already decided on, uh, and then what exactly do we decide on November? Any other questions from the board? All right, I'm going to move to the community. <laughs> 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 so for phase two. How, is there an estimated time of completion? So phase one was March to August. So phase two is from March to phase two. Phase two being the concession stand, the bathroom. Also going to start in March. Just not sure when the end is. No, no, no. So if there's a lot of plumbing fixtures that have to be installed. It's a much more complicated project, um, and we have several different layers of approvals. Um, because you have aqua involved, you have a township. I believe we have the wastewater treatment uh, authority in Philadelphia that also has a say in the projects. So there's some barriers to getting to the end of that project. Mary Mac of the park um, on phase two. So if we begin football season, then we don't have up and running restrooms and a concession stand. You did say there would be some uh we'll make temporary al alternative facilities okay available. Thank you. And then for the track season, um spring track season, I would assume that coach back and coach room are you know they're going to be displaced. Yes. Okay. That has been communicated. Yeah. Um uh, and then would we so March to August, if everything goes well, um, and will there be updates on the project? Like, how often will we receive an update? If it's going to be delayed past August, how far in advance? I know this, I'm just seeing things, but just for a plan, like, okay, we're planning for March to August. Um, how often will we receive an update on At every facility? Every facility? Yes, ma'am. That, that'll be a standing item. Um, from here until closure of the project. Okay. Yeah, we, we currently meet every two weeks with um, the engineers, and when the, when the project is bid, then we'll start meeting the contractors well every two weeks or every week if necessary, and we'll get frequent updates. Okay. But in terms of you guys, <laughs> we'll be doing this final You don't want to show it up at that meeting. <laughs> 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 
Are we still open to um, sponsorship? Yes. To have this project? Yes. Okay. We need to meet. Yeah. The, okay. the time is now. Okay. I, I'm being very honest. I was thinking about that when I was over there. We're actually working on flyer and material. That could be going to my program book. I didn't print yet, so we got that. <laughs> well, okay. if, we, if we had it done tomorrow, we could join. Yep, I can put it in. I didn't print yet, so if you can get it to me by tomorrow, we can go to the program book. That'd be oh, great. Boy. Well, Any other questions from the community? I did. So the November board meeting, where you're going to discuss the options, is that the facilities meeting, the legislative meeting? The yeah, leg legislative meeting. Legislative. And what meeting was it when you learned about all the different groups that children need? It was an information city uh, meeting today. Oh, information meeting today. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Be clear that there wasn't deliberation. It was in. It was in Transfer of information from right. all of stuff. I mean, I, I didn't even know there was so many different stuff. It just protects the meeting, but that was for the board. Yeah. Any other questions? A motion to adjourn. So move. Second. Please. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Meeting is adjourned. <laughs>